Hey guys, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I think we're all ready to dive in and get started on the back end, so thanks for watching. Uh, I think we're just going to get started. Oh, I forgot to turn on my MongoDB database. Uh, so I think that I'm going to pause the video and do that. Um, if you guys could just uh, give me a sec. But again, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy it uh, in this Mernstack Masterclass. Thank you. Okay guys, sorry about that. Um, I just forgot to do it ahead of time. Uh, so basically I'm using MongoDB local. If you want to do that also, because sometimes I find it better, uh, well for testing environments anyway, um, it, sometimes when I use MongoDB, the actual uh, website, uh, sometimes it errors and it gives me a timed out thing and it doesn't allow me to connect. So working with local uh, MongoDB, it, uh, it it just runs smoother. Anyway, this is where you can go to for the tutorial on that. It's real simple, as you can see. Uh, basically, you're doing everything in the command line once you've downloaded it. It's not a big deal. Um, so I will leave this link in the description for your convenience. Now, so we are all ready. Our MongoDB server is running. Uh, so we're going to do, this is the start. We're diving in. This is what you do first off, npm init, and then dot, because we're going to do it inside this this folder. No, uh, sorry, npm init. Okay, good. Package name, Mernstack app. Sure. Uh, you can type in anything you want. You can type, uh, let's say, student, uh, student tracker app. We'll call it that. Sorry, you can only contain. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, this is just the file name. Don't worry, it doesn't have any uh, play really. Version 1.0, fine. Description track student info. Okay, entry point. I'm gonna call it server.js. Um, it's kind of standard, industry standard, and it's what I'm used to, but you can name this whatever. This is this will be our actual server. Uh, test command no. Git repository no. Not not for this. That's normally where you'd enter keywords no. Author Adam. You can write your name. I guess MIT whatever. Uh, is this okay? Yes. And there we go. Now uh, let's see. Let's do code dot to open VS Code code period and that opens your project in VS Code. Alright, so here we are. This is our Mernstack app. Uh, and by the way, these are the different versions. Just ignore those for right now. So we have our package.json file, which our student tracker app the name. No spaces. Uh, version that we entered. I did I spell that wrong? Oh I did spell that wrong, whatever. Uh, student info uh, scripts, we won't need this test script, but whatever, I'll leave it alone for now. Um, let's go back to our Word document. So we did npm init, so that creates our file. Okay, so that creates our package.json file, it, it initializes it, starts it, whatever. Uh, next, let's install the uh, packages that we're going to need. So let's do that. So let's uh, let's open a command line in VS Code. Uh, and one thing I learned, so you have a terminal right here in VS Code, which is kind of cool, but I also like, no, shut up. Sorry, I don't know why that popped up. Uh, what? Sorry. Uh, you can move panel to the right. I like my, um, sorry about that. I like my uh, terminal uh, panel to the right. Uh, that's just me. You can do whatever. Um, so we hit here, and now we're going to install our packages. Now, since we have npm, node package manager, we're going to do npm i or install, whichever. I do i. Uh, install, we're going to use express. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, uh, body parser. Even though Express has its own body parser, which is for JSON, and I'll explain that later. 
Uh, I think also we need oh mongoose of course the uh tr 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 where are we mongoose to connect to our MongoDB and I think that's it and we'll have one more after this but I'll get to that it's got to be done separate so express body parser and mongoose and you'll see that that gives us our nude modules here. I'm sorry about the, you know what, I, just to avoid confusion, I don't want anyone to get confused. Let me uh, just delete those things. Uh, Marine stack, let me delete, it was something I was, oops, don't want to delete that. Uh, so let's delete that. Oops, hope I didn't delete too much. Uh, Alright, so, sorry, sorry about that. Alright, so just so there's no confusion. So at this point you should have just your node modules, which is all your big deal, including Express. There's Express that we uh, installed, our package.json file, and our package-lock.json uh, package file. This is just controls versions of different things. You don't need to worry about that. Our package.json file is the the dealio that we need here. Okay, you can save it. Actually, okay. I'm sorry. Don't save. All right. Now, you'll notice that our package.json file has a few extra things underneath the author: dependencies, body parser, and its version, Express, uh, which is used to create um, node servers or at least to simplify it anyway, and Mongoose uh, which, with its version. Uh, we're going to do one more. We're going to do npm again, install. Uh, this time we're going to do dash uppercase d node mon, which is a pretty popular uh, node package um, or uh, thing that helps. So basically... So we don't have to restart our server every time we make a, a, a change. Uh, normally you'd have to make a change, save it, stop your server, and then restart your server in order to test it. All right. So And then you'll see over here, this adds it as a dev dependency so that when you um, deploy your app and other people download it, um, you know, it's, it's just a dev dependency. It's just something you use uh, during development. Now... I'm going to close that because we're done with that. So what I'm going to do here is create a new file called server. We're going to create our actual server .js. That's going to be our real deal thing. Now, the way that we do things here is we bring things in. So we need to use Express uh, in order to create an easier, easier, more streamlined version of our node server. Okay. So we're going to bring it in. So we're going to do const Express equals require that's the keyword require express nothing too crazy um let's see right, you know what let's just bring in nah, i don't want to do too much sorry about that whoops what the heck sorry about that uh all right so for right now that's all we need so this is our basic thing so now const app equals express and we're going to initialize the express function to actually use it okay now we're next going to create a uh, app we're going to use that app dot listen to listen on a port okay we're going to give that port a number, 5,000, comma. And then we're going to test it to see if it runs, dot log. So we're going to give a message to the console, uh, which should be over here, hopefully. <laughs> uh, server is running. Okay, and that's really all you need in order to get a, a an express server going. If, if we were using just straight up node, it would take a, it would be a lot more I can tell you that oops okay 
uh, but instead of that, let's do const port equals. Uh, it's actually we're going to do process dot env or environment dot port or which is a ternary operator or 5000 oops what the heck what about that or 5000 so what this means is that when your app is in production it'll use whatever port it's told to by the uh, by the server I'm sorry, by the uh, hosting company, or it's going to use 5,000, which in our case, that's going to be the case. Uh, the case. <laughs> uh, and then we'll just add our port dealio there. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot this. Uh, this is a callback function that uh, it gives us the option for later on. Uh, and we can actually do this. I'm just going to add backticks, which is uh, a little bit easier to work with. And that way we add a dollar sign and curly braces, and we put our port running on. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry, we need to initialize it. Yeah, duh. Nodemon server. So this is how we start our server. Uh, so this is a bare bones basic server. Now, would you use this for anything? Not necessarily, but it's going to get us to that point. So we're going to start our server, Nodemon server. You don't have to type .js, and it's going to run our server. And there you go. See, it says server is running on port 5000. And there you go. Uh, you know, just for demonstration purposes, we change our port to 8000 and we do save all. See how Nodemon is watching for changes. And now it says server is running on port 8000. So that is a basic bare bones um, uh, 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 server app. Server app. Uh, that is a basic bare bones server used with express so let's do the next part let's uh hmm, you know what let's bring in mongoose const we'll, we'll take care of our connection to uh to our mongoose local uh, server since that's important since we have to connect it so const mongoose equals require oops require mongoose okay and let's go ahead and bring in body parser const body parser oh excuse me require and I think it's body uh, body dash parser parser I think that's what it is const oh alright whatever sorry camel case camel case is lowercase first letter first word uppercase all the rest of the words uh, so we'll just bring in body parser for now um, okay so let's create our connection I'm going to come down here below this typically the your port uh, uh, variable and your app dot listen uh, is at the bottom it doesn't have to be but that's typically where it is because JavaScript is a uh, it goes in order of the uh, of the document unless you say otherwise so let's do mongoose.connect this is stop it dot connect and it's a function so let's open that okay and let's do database which is a um, variable that we haven't uh, created yet but we will um, now these things are part of the get out of here why, I don't know why this keeps coming up it's really obnoxious so uh, these things you kind of have to add in otherwise you'll get a uh, an error so it's use uh, what the heck is it? New URL 
parser and we set that to true um, it's just something that Mongo came out with there's there's other things uh, you can use but that's what we're going to use for right now now let us do um, let's do a thing and I am going to actually steal from my own project if I could find it uh, config keys I'm going to, so this is our key file that we're going to create um, but it's it's just already set up so I'm going to copy and paste and I'll explain in just a second so what we're going to do is inside here we're going to add a new folder called config this is the file structure that I prefer and then inside config we're going to have a new file called keys or key I guess keys.js is fine okay and then we're going to paste this module dot export this is our mongo uri which is of course the the key uh, and this is the value a string which links to our mongodb local host if it, if this was your mongodb atlas account you would just put that that's where you would put that in here where you in the first video i showed you how to get the connection string for your mongodb atlas account that's where this goes here okay so we can Save all. Uh, it crashed. Yeah, we know. Okay. Uh, don't worry. We'll take care of that in a second. So we're going to close that. We're done with that. So now we're going to bring in. Uh, we are going to bring in our, or well, I should say, we're going to create our cons for this database connection. Uh, equals require. Okay, uh, so we're going to do slash, uh, we're going to go into our config folder, okay, slash, oh, you know what, it's just, normally I make a, I didn't want to confuse anybody, normally I add in a separate folder in here called keys, and then I put keys.js inside of that, but I didn't do that this time, it's fine. Uh, and then we're going to uh, append onto that dot mongo uri, which is our our value that we, you know, our string. Okay. And here, when you're not doing like express is a added to the core node module, so you don't need a file path for that. But for our own stuff that we create in node, you need dot slash so it knows where to go see it even gives you a little folder there so let's do save all okay good now it's going to crash because we didn't you know we didn't do anything else oh i'm sorry i forgot forgot the uh quotes here that's why it's giving us that error forget about that okay it's still going to crash don't worry okay uh, so let's see here. Okay. So the Mongo, mongoose.connect is a promise based thing. So we're going to go down to the next level dot. Then we're going to tell it what to do after that. So the, the actual connection is right here. We're, we brought in our, our connection string where it's going to go. Okay. Sorry, I could do slash keys. I forgot about that. Okay, good. Uh, so we brought in our database. We're calling this our database, which in actuality, it's just this string here that tells it where to go. It's basically a URL. Uh, so we require our config, our keys file, and our Mongo URI. We use a mongoose.connect function which mongoose provides for us otherwise it would be like three or four lines of code at least uh, and then this is just something you have to add don't worry about that um, and then we're going to say what it, what we want it to do then right so we're going to dot then because it's promise based and then we're going to give it a uh, callback function and let's see what should we do I don't know let's do console.log uh, 
app is connected to the database. I guess that's good. And since this is promise based, it's usually a good idea to then uh, do a dot catch for any errors. Okay. And so we then want to, once we do that, we're going to error. This is a, also a callback function. And we're going to do console.log uh, that error so that we can you know, figure out if there's an issue, which hopefully there isn't. But if there is, we'll be able to see it. All right, good. So it's connected. Uh, because, by the way, I have my uh, MongoDB database on localhost running on a separate uh, terminal window, which, you know, like I said, I'll put that link in the description. Okay, so let's check back with our list. So we did this, we installed our packages, we created a server including link to MongoDB Atlas. Now it's time for number six, and I'm thinking I might, because it, um, this is going on a little longer than I thought. Uh, so I think we're going to do this next part halfway, and then I'm going to end it. And I'll make two parts to this back end. I had a feeling that the video would run on a little bit long, but that's okay. Um, so this uh, back end uh, back end part will be in two videos, and I have a feeling that the front end will be in two parts as well, possibly even three. Um, so please, if you don't mind, subscribe uh, if you haven't already. If you have, I certainly appreciate it very much so. Uh, and two, um, hit the bell notification so that you can get uh, notified when those new uh, parts of the course come out. Okay? Uh, which, you know, I would also greatly appreciate. Uh, so I think we're going to get our route set up and we'll do a get and get all route. And then we'll save the post and delete route for the next video, I believe. Uh, just so we're not cramming too much into one. All right? So let's do that. Uh, so let's come down here. Actually, no. So we're going to close this config uh, folder. So we're going to create a new folder called routes. This is what I like to do, and it's kind of industry standard routes. And then inside routes folder, we're going to create another folder called API. Okay. Okay. So we're going to open that. Oops. What the hell? I'm not sure why this is doing that. That's weird. Sure. Oops. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. But in the in the inter typically you create another folder called uh, let's do it. All right, API. Good. All right. Now inside of API, we're going to create a file called students.js, and this is going to be our route where our uh, uh, file goes. But first, in our server.js uh, file, we have to tell um, our server where to look for our routes. Okay, so I guess we'll come down below the connection, the MongoDB connection. We're going to do app.use. We're going to use our app for Express again. <sighs> Excuse me, I, sorry, I got an eyelash on my computer screen somehow. Uh, sorry about that. So we're going to app.use uh, quotes and we're going to do we're going to call it say api slash students okay that's our actual route okay comma students okay oh and up here i'm sorry we also have to bring in, actually we should do that below the uh, express app. So we're going to do const students. So this is this variable where we created down here, or I'm sorry, we used down here. We're now going to create it students, students, thank you, equals require, and this is for the file pass so that you know, our server knows where to look. Uh, parentheses, da, 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 and our dot slash, because again, this is a local route inside this folder. Uh, 
So it's going to be in, of course, routes slash API, and then slash students, which is the file name, right? Yes, students, good. And let's save that. Save all, good, we got an error. Let's see what is function. Router.use requires middleware function. Okay. Yeah, so we didn't actually create anything in this student uh, thing yet, so it's going to give us an error naturally. We didn't actually do anything, and we didn't create the router. Uh, uh, we didn't bring in the router function, I should say. So let's do that now. Const, we need express again. Express equals require express by the way if you have some time look up how long it is to create a server with just straight up node and how long it is to create just a straight up connection to mongodb with just straight up node without using express there's a reason why express is in the mern stack name uh, because it makes things so much easier okay so const here's where we're going to create our router router um, equals express dot capital R router uh, 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 yeah function thank you all right and that's it now uh, hmm let's see okay you know what we also need to do that's why we're getting this error over here as well we need to do uh, module dot exports equals an router um, and export the router okay nothing too bad and by the way this is what we're exporting not this this is the function from express this is our variable for that so that's what we want to uh, get out so now we are finally ready to create an actual server that's going to go and hit our mongodb database and give us back some information okay the information that we ask for naturally okay so all right so let, we're going to do router because we're now using router through express not app like we did over here that's different well it's not different it's the same thing but we're using router now so router.get we're going to make a get request and by the way for the sake of time i'm getting sloppy normally you would do some sort of uh, comment here like slash slash uh, get all route slash slash public route because it's public people can access it um, but I'm going to skip that for now so dot get parentheses um, whatever those are called I can't remember at this point slash because we already have set up our route right here API students so now you know if you were to add on to this say you know whatever it would be API slash student slash this but since we're in the router we don't need that so we come out of that comma and then we need our callback res uh, comma uh, no sorry not res is request because we are request comma res okay we're going to do our arrow oops arrow function and we're going to open that up and we're going to do student dot find oh shut up sorry i don't know why my thing is doing that student dot find is your find why is it keep i'm sorry guys student it's really uh, I, I don't know dot fine parentheses sorry about that I don't know why that's... Uh, so and then we want this is promise based this find this find function so we're going to do dot then okay and we're going to give another callback function here and we're going to do we're going to use our response dot json we're going to get we could we want a JSON response students okay <coughs> oh sorry guys ah. 
allergies. Okay, and then as always for good measure, we're going to do a error. So ERR, I just do callback console.log, and we'll log that error. Okay, so this is to get all of our students. So let's save all, see what we get. Oh, okay, running so far so good. So this gets every single one of our records. Okay, uh, let's see. All right. So let's now do, uh, we're, again, this is just a setup. So we're setting everything up. So let's do our next route. This is get student by ID for when we want to search for a student. It'll be public again. Okay, so we're going to do, again, router.get. Okay, good. Okay, we're going to do uh, those again, obviously. Now, remember what I said. This slash actually means API slash students. So if we were to add anything onto this, our um, oh, stupid allergies, um, our API, or I'm sorry, our, our endpoint then becomes more. So it would be API slash students slash whatever we type in here. So, which we're going to do. So we want to actually get, we want to add in a placeholder which is colon ID, because we're going to insert the ID dynamically in there so that we can uh, search for it by ID. Then again, as normal, we do our request, comma, response, and then we do, oops, and we do our callback function. There we go. Now we do uh, student, and by the way, this here we haven't actually created yet but we can do that uh, let's do that now since I thought of it now this is going to cause an error but we're going to do it now we haven't done it yet uh, but in the next video I'm going to show you how to make this not error so student uh, equals require as you can see requires used a lot uh, parentheses or I'm sorry quotes whatever and we're going to, so now don't forget, we're in API and routes. So we need to go out of there and out of routes. So now we're in the core file of MernStack app. And we're going to go into modals slash students. Okay. Now, this basically, we haven't created it yet, so it's going to cause an error. Uh, we haven't created yet, so it's going to cause an error. This is basically our creating, uh, creating our data. Uh, cre I'm sorry, creating not our database, but the files in our database. It's it's basically a model or mo uh, yeah, model. I don't know why I said modal before. Uh, it's be basically creating a model of what we want of how we want the information to store in our in our MongoDB database. Okay. And this here is how we're referencing this in our routes. So students.find by ID. And that's a function, of course. <laughs> uh, and we're going to add in as an argument request.params.id because that's what's going to be sent to us from the form or whatever. That's how we have to add it in there. Oh, jeez. Sorry. All right. And then, again, this is promised base. So we're going to do a dot then. Okay. <coughs> sorry, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Dot then. Not console log, but rather give our res.json. And we're going to do student students okay and then like I said as before dot catch oops I messed up on that one yeah oh, well, one more time dot catch should be an expert at this point now error callback console dialog and we log that error speaking of which let's save save all See if we get anything here. 
Okay, it's giving us an error for that. So let me just comment this out for now. Because since we haven't created that yet, we'll do that in the next video. And we're good. You know what? Uh, let's buzz through. Let's do one more route. Since we're kind of flowing here. Router.post. Now this is a post route, naturally. So, uh, parentheses slash, because we're going to post to API slash students. We're going to give our that, our request and response here, our callback function. Oh, goodness, sorry. Sorry about that, guys. So, now, we're going to create a new record in our database. So, through this, and again, I'll explain that in the next video. So, we're going to do const new, uh, we'll do student, okay, equals new student. Now, that might seem a little confusing, but it's not uh, once I get into it. So we need parentheses and then curly braces. So this is our, our variable that we're creating to use our new student elsewhere. This is creating a new instance of this. So we're creating a new student through that, okay? So we want, let's say, name, oops, sorry, name, colon okay and we're going to get the name from our request dot per, uh, sorry um, request dot body dot name uh, I don't know we'll do email this by the way is what you're choosing right this is the information you need to have entered into your database uh, through your front end so we're going to get it so we're going to do request dot body dot email and I don't know we'll do uh, address Th this is kind of redundant at this point but whatever dot body dot address and I could get into uh, you know nested JSON data which maybe I'll go over in the next video uh, but that's basically it um, so let's see so this is the information this is our thing, and we'll have that in here. So in in our model of our student schema to create our, our information in the database uh, is controlled through this. This request.body.name, this is our request from here, our, it's being sent from the front end to here, to our back end. Then we do, come outside of that, we take our new student, student, uh, and then we do dot save because we want to save it and that's a you know a thing that comes with it good and then we want to do oops come outside of this and dot then right and then we do since it's promise based we do new student here callback and we do res, we're going to give it back JSON. So once the student is entered, we're going to give back JSON to make sure that we did it correctly. And then we'll give it, and then we want to give it that new student data that we just entered. And I'm sure you could have guessed by now, but we're going to do a dot catch here. Error. Callback. Oh, goodness. Sorry, guys. I got allergies. Console.log. And we're going to log that error. And that's it. That's that's our router.post. Uh, let's see. Let, all right, look. So let me just add some quick comments. Uh, post route. Post route. Slash public. Good. Let's do one more. Let's bang out one more. Slash delete uh, route slash public this is for deleting a student okay so we're going to do router dot delete as you I'm sure you could have guessed and we're going to hit that API once again but we we this time we also need to get it by ID so we don't just delete everything there is a way to delete everything but we're not going to get into that now so a request and response again the rest of our callback function here 
Okay, and then we have to do student, which is again referencing this, and we'll go over that in the next video. Uh, student dot find by ID again, similar to the uh, 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 or get student by ID, but this time we're deleting. Uh, so we need inside of here we need the request dot params dot um, what the heck is it? Oh, by the ID, duh. Obviously, okay. So student dot find by ID. Put that on the next line, and then we need uh, a dot then, which is where we're gonna do the deed of deleting. So dot then. So here we found the student by the ID that's passed into the route by the front end, and we'll get into that in the front end. Obviously, now is when we're gonna actually delete it. So student, we're gonna create a variable uh, inside our function. So this is, I'm sorry, not a variable rather, but this is an argument to a function. This can be called whatever you want. I'm just going to call it student, right? And then we have that. And then when student dot remove, which is a function. And then dot, another dot then, because you could have a bunch if you so choose. And then we're going to do no arguments to our callback function. And then we're going to do Let's do res.json and give us a JSON response. Uh, so parentheses, curly braces. Um, let's do success. Can't even spell success. Will be true. So it gives us a true response that we indeed did delete it. Okay. Uh, okay. And then we do dot catch here. Uh, error. Oops, error. Callback. Cancel dot log. Error. Okay. All right. So that's that's it. Those are our routes. That's it. Let's save just to make sure we're good. Uh-oh. Oh, no, it's good. Okay, sorry. It is good. <laughs> I got nervous there. Um, someone us use unified topology. True. That must... I forget which one that is, but we'll... I don't, know. I don't know. Sometimes these work, and sometimes these don't. So, comma, paste into our MongoDB connection. I don't know. Let's see if we get to, to go... Oh, it did. Okay, whatever. Uh, all right, so those are our routes. So, all right, listen, this video is going on way longer than I expected it to. It's going to take me forever, forever to upload. The next video will create our schema or our model, model view controller. And then uh, that will, I think that's, oh, and then, so in the next video, we'll create our structure for our database of how we store information.